Welcome to St Michael and All Angels Church, Sopley. It's the second Sunday before Advent. We are in that time of year when we remember and give thanks for those who've gone before us. The great saints, those who gave their lives in war, and ordinary people who have lived lives of faith in quiet ways like most of us. In our Gospel today, Jesus does not praise a dependable, safe course of action. To hear the message of the kingdom is a privilege and a responsibility. It's not about using our gifts, it's about spreading the message of the kingdom with which we have been entrusted. It's a call to commitment and faithfulness. We are not called to be passive Christians. We've been given gifts and abilities to be used in God's service. It's no good just finishing up where you started. It was interesting to listen to the victory speech by President-elect Joe Biden in Delaware on Saturday the 7th of November. He said this, I remember as my grandpa said when I walked out of his home when I was a kid up in Scranton, he said, Joey, keep the faith. And our grandmother, when she was alive, she yelled, no, Joey, spread it. Spread the faith. This is what we must all be about. So let's get ready to worship the God of all ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayers of penitence. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Turn to us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for today, the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we hear our first two Bible readings. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 1, verses 7 and 12 to 18. Be silent in the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice, he has invited his guests. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Therefore their goods shall become booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wines. The great day of the Lord is at hand. It is near, and hastens quickly. The noise of the day, the Lord is bitter. Then the mighty men shall cry out, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. as labour pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, are drunk at night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore comfort each other, and edify one another, just as you also are doing. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And today's gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. It's Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two. To another, one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And those, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We live in strange times and we even seem to have some strange passages to read in our lectionary readings. For today, the first reading from Zephaniah tells of dire warnings, such things as their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Which isn't very cheerful, is it? Perhaps it's a suitable reading for our times. Then the second reading from 1 Thessalonians is not much better. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. These are just the sort of passages to read if we're feeling overly cheerful and need to get our miseries back. Except that's not what they're about at all. Zephaniah is reminding people that their good fortune comes from God and it's not something that they can take for granted. 1 Thessalonians anticipates Advent, which starts in two weeks' time. Our lives are part of a much larger time frame as we live in the in-between times, between Christ's first coming and his second, whenever that may be. The Apostle Paul is building up a sense of anticipation, full of warnings about being alert 
of being ready for God's judgment. Paul believed that within his own lifetime the end of time would occur and he tried to make the new Christians aware of the urgent need to be ready to stand before God. Now we may not be as expectant of Christ's return as Paul was, yet we will all stand before God one day. What will he see in us? What will he make of us? How prepared are we to look our maker in the face? Then we come to today's gospel with its strange story of a man giving out wealth to three slaves to look after. Notice particularly the third servant. He's not just nervous or even afraid. He's plain terrified, so much so that he buries it in the ground. And it was a lot of money. A talent is equivalent to 6,000 days of work. That's 15 to 20 years worth. But neither of the other two servants felt such a great fear, even though they were entrusted with significantly more and therefore had more to lose. The landowner gives them considerable sums to invest and then only comes back after a long time. That's showing a lot of trust. And the landowner rejoices in the success of the first two servants. Well done, enter into the joy of your master. But not the third one. It's easy to read this parable as a warning against laziness in light of the landowner, that's God or Christ's, eventual return, or as an encouragement to actively be preparing for the day of reckoning when all our accounts will be settled. And that's a good Advent theme, but we're not quite there yet. But I do think that this is a warning about how we picture God and about how he deals with us. Matthew is helping us to see what God is really like. And how that picture that we have in our mind's eye affects how we live out our Christian faith. Matthew is offering a warning. What you see is what you get. So if we imagine God as a stern and angry and giving out to dishing out harsh justice, we will likely see that everything bad in our lives is a punishment from God. And if we see God as fickle, and not at all sympathetic to us mortals, then that is what we will get, or at least what we feel we will get. But if we view God as being a God of grace, who builds us up and trusts us and sets us free, then we will be surprised and uplifted by all the grace, all the love, all the gifts that he actually does shower upon us. And when we imagine God to be a God of love, we find it far easier to experience God's love in our own lives and to share that around with others. I think that how we picture or see God really matters. So many live with a distorted view of what he is like, some kind of sadistic old man who punishes us for the slightest slip, who is looking for us to mess up and to make mistakes. But really, we see God in the person of Jesus. It's about sacrificial love, supremely shown in the cross. A death that does not make it possible for God to love and forgive us, but that shows that God loves and forgives us. The God we see in Jesus is not a harsh God reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed but always gives more than we expect or deserve and gathering what we offer back in joy and in love. In the church's year, this is a special time that we largely lose sight of it. This year more than any other, I expect. But we are on the verge of seeing God's power and glory put aside, that God might come to us as one of us in the vulnerable form of a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. It's Matthew that tells us that one of the names for Christ is Emmanuel, God is with us. The one who came in our human flesh as a promise to be always both with us and for us. Now all of us need to check out our assumptions of Jesus against the image 
and the promise of the Christ child. Always we must announce and live out that God is a God of love, who gives and trusts us with profound gifts and riches, all the while eager for us to make the most of them and inviting us always to enter the joy of our Lord. Well, that's a pretty good thing to be getting on with in these different days, isn't it? And an affirmation of faith, which is used from this period from All Saints to Advent. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for by his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the Bride say come, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. So let us now come for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we pray for your church. And although we cannot meet together in our church buildings, we pray that we may become beacons of light and hope and joy and love to the world you have asked us to bless. And Lord, you have blessed each one of us with amazing gifts and talents in order that we might be that blessing. May we encourage one another support each other as we build our faith and live out our hope of salvation. Prompt us, Lord, with willing hearts to show your love and care always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we give thanks for those around the world who use their gifts and talents in government, commerce, and in building up societies. In this time, when many are unsure of their financial futures, we ask that those who have been gifted this way may have your guidance and your wisdom in all their dealings. And Lord, we pray for those whose gifts cannot be used through no fault of their own. Those in the world who are oppressed, abused, living in poverty. We look for your kingdom to come, Lord, when justice and mercy will be known throughout the earth. Show us where we might help during this time of waiting, using our gifts and talents where we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Author of all that is good and creator of beauty, we give thanks and rejoice in the gifts and talents of artists, musicians, writers, workers in crafts. We give thanks for those who have skills to teach and to develop the gifts of our children. We give thanks for scientists, those working in medicine and medical research, for those working in technology, for inventors and creators. And Lord, we give a special thanks at this time 
for those using their skills and talents in searching for COVID vaccines. And we give our heartfelt thanks for the news of a vaccine found this week, for the skills, the dedication and the bravery of all involved in bringing that about. We praise and thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those we know who are sick and who've asked for our prayers at this time. We pray for Avril, for Claire, Matthew, Steve and Debbie Plowright, Susanna Fletcher, Jude, Mandy Parker, Vernon, Peter Sharrett, Ben, Matthew, Rosie, Joan Pagram, John and Jill Neal, Margaret Creighton, Doreen Rendell, Toby, Daphne, Lorraine Perdue, Christine, Georgina, Adrian Young, Bill Mather, Patricia, Peter's mum, Becky, Braden, Charlotte, Kate White, Anne Ram, and Tony Maidment. And in a moment of silence, let us bring any for whom we are concerned, seeking their blessing and their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the resurrection, we pray for those who have departed this life. We give thanks for their witness, their prayers, their blessings and their gifts to others. We remember those whose anniversaries are at about this time, remembering especially Joan Mary Cross, John Rees, Irene Bevan, Carol Adamson and Jonathan Small. Gracious God, you are the God of comfort. Comfort those who mourn this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly King, you have blessed all with your gifts and talents and have sent us into the world to bless and tell of the gospel. Though apart at this time, we are bound together in love and service as your church. May all who come to know us come to know you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. We give you thanks for the whole company of the saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour and power, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer the peace to one another if we're around others, if we're on our own. Let's offer God's peace in our mind's eye to those we love, to our family, our friends, fellow church members. To you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints, 
where heaven and earth unite, may Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give you voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Mary, St Michael, St Luke and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ that is given for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Today's post communion prayer. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Strength for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. And the blessing. May the Father who's, who is creator and author of all life guide you to discern God's will for your life. May the Son, who lived alongside us, encourage us on our journey. May the Holy Spirit prompt us to meet the challenges set before us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Our worship has ended. Our service must now begin. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.